It's amazing what some elbow grease can do to a 100 plus year old home. Last year, we put a lot of love into her and the results have been so satisfying. I'm obsessed with before and after photos and that's always my driving motivation to keep going. This is a compilation of all the home projects we tackled last year. Plus, we started off the new year with a She Shed glow up and I wanted to share that with you too. If you don't know what I mean by She Shed, click the link in the description box to see how me and my husband built this 12 by 25 foot building that I use for my filming, staging, creating, and my office. I pretty well just left these built-ins white all this time. It's been over three years now and I was ready for a little bit of a change and I was really loving the ever popular mushroom color I was seeing all over the internet and found this paint. I will make sure to link it down below for you and it is such a beautiful color and really is going to help warm up the space. This was exactly the color I was looking for. It's subtle, but it has a little bit of a touch of a moody vibe too. And I used a combination of a paintbrush and roller to finish the shelves. Here is a side by side. You can see the original white on the left and the new color on the right. And here is what it looks like completely painted with the doors put on such a nice contrast against the white shiplap. Then I was able to add some of the finishing touches like the new hardware. It's the same hardware we used in our kitchen makeover. Yes, I'll be adding that into this video too. So hang on, that is soon to come. And then of course my absolute favorite part is accessorizing. I even found these candlesticks at Dog. Dollar Tree, what a bargain, very great look. I even added some battery powered taper candles I found on Amazon into those candlesticks. Love them because they are remote controlled. So I'll link those down below too for you. My husband installed these picture lights above, loving those. And this just has a completely different look and vibe altogether. A little bit more cozy. And again, like I said, a nice contrast between the white shiplap and now the warmer, cozier tone of the painted built-ins. You'll notice that honeybee picture at the top there. I found a set of those at Target. We also got a puppy last year and we named her Honey. So anytime I see honeybees, it makes me think of her and they had the perfect vibe to go along with this new look. So I was excited to find those, a nice contrast against the lighter paint. Also found some brass accents, including this large lantern. I also have smaller ones on the tops of those shelves. And even the books I have are from Dollar Tree. You could always save money. Check Dollar Tree. They have some great things. But a lot of the other accessories are from Target and I'll try to link as many as I can down in the description box below. It's just that nice combination of black and brass and white and wood tones that makes this look all come together. This video is going to be filled with so many awesome before and afters and here's the one of the built-ins. Up next, we're gonna head into our home, into our living room, part of our 100 year old house. We have always had the TV in our living room in this corner and I've always envisioned a fireplace here. So it started off with a vision and a dream and a hope to have a fireplace in our living room. So I drew up this little sketch just to give you an idea and then went to work on creating it. Here we had just installed these new floors maybe two months <laughs> ago once this video was filmed and my husband had to cut this corner out which is a little bit hard to do but I'm glad we did because it all comes together in the end and you'll never see in there anyway but definitely had to get it right the first time. So we basically did a 45 degree angle in this corner and started by just framing it all out, making sure it was secure to the wall and also to the ceiling. As we're gonna be adding some stone onto this and we wanted to make sure we had a really good sturdy base to work on and we'll have the fireplace in the center. So it was just kind of a puzzle piece trying to put this frame together and also measuring out our electric fireplace to create the hole before we framed that part out too and here's kind of a side by side of where it started and where we ended up then it was time to add some backer board onto the fireplace just the bottom half though as we're going to be adding shiplap to the top my husband got really really good at this as he did the fireplace in the she shed as well and we just added that onto the front of the backer board up until the center of the fireplace
Yes, honey, you did an amazing job. And I love the thumbs up at the end. Good to go. Next up is ship lap for the top half of this. Just starting with the bottom piece first, making sure it was level and then using some brad nails to attach it all into place, working our way up all the way to the ceiling. It's awesome how quickly shiplap goes up and really transforms the space. This was quick and easy to do. Went ahead, spackled all the holes, sanded it down, and then went ahead and painted. We also went ahead and built our own mantle for this. We did for the she shed, did it the exact same way for inside the house. So really the she shed fireplace and the inside fireplace match up pretty closely. I'm just using some really nice select pine for this and build basically just a rectangle. You wanna adjust the sizes to fit your fireplace and you literally just kind of start with one side, attach on the end pieces, add on another side, and then you'll measure out for the front. So then you have a front piece and you leave the back side open. This is such an easy thing to do. Save so much money if you can build it yourself and it really is just simple and basic. Just some brad nails, some wood glue, and some screws to attach it. I also use some stain. You can also stain yours whatever color you want. Ours in the she shed was this dark walnut wood stain. So that's what I went with for the house as well. We also built this bracket out of two by twos, attached it onto the shiplap with some wood wood screws and then what happens is you'll just slide your mantle right onto those brackets and screw down from the top to attach the mantle right down onto that bracket and it looks like it is floating it is super easy and such a cost effective way to make your own mantle This isn't the best picture, but there's the mantle and also some brackets for our new frame TV, which I love because it looks like a photo, unless you wanna watch TV and then it turns into a TV. So it's art and entertainment all in one. I just love that thing. Then I just added a few little accessories, some olive leaves in a vase, a black metal clock to kind of contrast, and some brass candlesticks. I will also link all these down in the description box below if i can find them if they're still available a little basket with a fiddle leaf fig tree in there and then our new fireplace and like you'll see here what a big difference this really wasn't that hard of a project maybe a weekend project to get this all installed but it all came together beautifully there's one idea with your photo this is changing it out using it as a TV, and then you can alter it back to a photo, which I just love. I also love being able to change out the mantle for the different seasons. So this is for fall and Halloween. And then my absolute favorite, Christmas. I was so excited. It was the first year we were able to put a Christmas tree next to the fireplace with stockings hung. I had been dreaming about that. And then new, and there's our honey next to our Valentine's Day mantle for this year. And now for the rest of the living room, the fireplace pretty much prompted us to be like, okay, now we need to do the whole room. So this is the before. I wasn't a big fan of the dark couch. It just made it feel really heavy in there. And so what we did is we left the walls the same color. We just added a band of white all the way around the room at the top. And it was about six feet high. If you need some ideas for measurement, we have nine foot high ceilings that might help too. We added a picture rail all the way around in the center of that line that separated the white from the color and then added our vertical pieces of wood every so often around the room. That wasn't the best part. That was trying to figure out um, dimensions, but we got there, we figured out the right spacing and then attach them with some brad nails. And the secret here is to make sure you cock all the edges. It's going to make this all blend and flow and look like one big piece versus several different pieces in a puzzle. So this is what it looks like once it's painted. You can see it all came together really nicely. And then again, time to accessorize and change out. We changed out the rug, we got new furniture and just kept it all really light and airy. 
So the biggest thing for me in this home as we go through these renovations is keeping things classic and my word for it is timeless. It's a 100 plus year old home. We wanna kinda of keep with the integrity of the home and it's sort of a smaller home too. So keeping with those lighter colors just makes it feel much more bright, open and bigger than it really is. We also got this new chest. We lack closet space, so my shoes actually live in there. And I've had fun decorating that for summertime, fall, and of course, Christmas time this year too. It was probably over four years ago now that we painted our bedroom this beautiful navy blue paint color. We found it in Ikea in their showroom, fell in love with it, took the plunge, painted it dark before it was like really a thing and you guys really loved it too. However, we recently went to this Airbnb in Galveston, Texas, and it was right off the water. We quickly realized we love this vibe. This is more us. Light, beachy, coastal. And so we decided we wanted to bring some of our vacation back home with us and change our bedroom into have that more coastal vibe. So the navy blue needed to go. And through renovating all this time now, we have quickly learned too that you should work from the top and work your way down. So we painted the ceiling in our bedroom first. And then because we have that dark navy blue color, I did go ahead and opt to put a primer on the walls. Usually I don't, but if you're gonna be using a really dark tone paint and you're gonna go light after that, I would take the extra step, go ahead, do a primer. It's gonna save you so much headache. This is the new color and I will link it down below. It is beautiful. It goes on like a blue tone, but some points of the day, it's almost like a green tone too. It was absolutely perfect and such a big change and difference from the navy blue. This is a fun little reel I did on Instagram. If you're not following me there, I'll link that down below too. Definitely come over. I can't show everything here and share everything here on YouTube. So head over there, you'll get little snippets and behind the scenes on Instagram. This is also continuing on with the paint. We painted our pocket doors. Yes, we love our pocket doors. We painted those a fresh coat of white, white paint. The secret here to make everything look seamless is this white caulk. So you'll run it all the way around your baseboards, anywhere where they meet the wall, or you have multiple trims like we do here with a smaller one on the bottom. Run some caulk all the way around. It is just going to make it look flawless, gorgeous, beautiful, crisp, white, fabulous. We also changed out all of the outlets and the switch covers and the light switches. So those were all fresh, nice and new as well. We have this one wall left here and that we decided to add shiplap to. So we didn't have to paint that, didn't have to prime that or anything. Just take the shiplap, cut it down to size, install it with some brad nails and you work your way, your way all the way up to the ceiling. Obviously we have a lot of windows in this bedroom along with doors too. So there's a lot of extra cutting to get around the windows, but really, like I said earlier, shiplap just goes up so fast and it's such an instant transformation. I love shiplap. We've added it so many different places in the house. This is going to be the wall behind our bed. So it's kind of like our pretty accent wall in this room. If you do shiplap, you also want to trim it out. So I always use this plastic lattice to go around the top and the edges of the shiplap. 100 year old home, we don't have straight walls, we don't have even walls or level walls. So this stuff just kind of bends into place. Here's the before of the wall and here is the after, after it's been trimmed. All the holes have been caulked, sanded, painted, beautiful, just crisp white paint. Really helps set off the blue walls on the side. The other thing our Airbnb had was 
pads underneath their rugs. And let me tell you, it's not that expensive to get some and use them under your rugs, but it will give you a more luxurious feel. So we went ahead and did that in our bedroom. And I'm so glad because every time you get in and out of bed, it is just cushy on your feet. Obviously, we also got a new rug for our room. It's a wool rug. We had never had a wool rug before. And now I want them everywhere because they are just higher quality. They're more cushiony. I don't know. I just love them. You just have to be a little bit careful how you clean them. So keep that in mind. We also upgraded to an adjustable bed. My parents have one. They have ranted and raved about it. Again, not too expensive either. So if you want a little bit of luxury in your room, this is the way to go. It lifts up. It's got a light under it. It's got vibration on it. It's just really, really nice. We also got a new mattress because our other one was just dead to the world. And now we have a nice new bed. We used our old sheets because we still love the color of those. And then we did switch out our furniture. So you can see we have new um, side tables. You'll see here shortly, we also got a new bed frame. And then we, like I said, do not have a whole lot of closet space. You can see we just have a really small one off to the left side there. And my husband was really wanting a nice, more closet space for him. So we got this armoire off of Wayfair, affordable, but you do have to build it. So that's kind of where you save the money. I'll link all that down in the description box below too. Um, and this is kind of another before and after of this space. Just really, really nice lines to it and the little curvature at the top. To save some money, we didn't switch out the light. We just changed out the lampshades on there. And we also paired that with matching lampshades on the bedside table lamps. When it comes to design, it really is more about texture for me versus prints and patterns. So I love the contrast of the blue glass on the lamps contrasting with the lampshades. Also, these little boxes have a little bit of glass sheen to them. Really nice against the white crisp background. And we mixed it up too here. We didn't get the same side tables as we did the bed frame, just to give a little bit of contrast. Loving the more beachy wood tones in here instead of the darker wood tones. And then just adding lots of fluff with some pillows and some textiles and some bedding here. For me, it's always kind of scary to be ordering things. You never know what's gonna show up, but all of our furniture is from Wayfair. Very great quality. I'll link it down below. It really did all come together really nicely. We didn't have to send a single thing back. So that felt really, really good to feel like I knew what I was doing and it came in the way we wanted it and hoped it to. Nothing was damaged then it was time to accessorize. This is a little uh, vanity table. We don't have a big bathroom, so I always need a spot to do my makeup. So I just moved that over to a different wall, got a new mirror that has lighting in it and kind of a new setup. I didn't have the window next to the vanity over here. So that's why the lighting was really important to me. And I still need to find something to go above it though. It just seems a little blank, but here you go. Here is the infamous before and after. So you can really see the big change and difference from the paint to the accessories, to the furniture, to the rug, every little thing. We even painted the, uh, the hardware on the pocket doors, which just made it feel much more new, refreshed. Such a huge difference. It feels so much bigger in there, so much light and bright and airy feeling in there. Exactly what we were going for. Couldn't be happier. It was a Friday night when I first so as much as I loved the before, it's definitely a, our vibe too. Just a completely different look. I always say your bedroom should be your place where you can feel like you can go to escape and relax. Kind of your own personal retreat. And the coastal vibe is definitely that when it comes to vacations for, uh, for us. So we really wanted to manifest that in our bedroom. And I have to say, it still feels like that to this day. We haven't made many updates, just added a few photos to the wall and that's about it but we've kept it just like this and it just feels like our own personal escape and bringing the vacation vibes back home with us so we can just really enjoy our home and this space 
This next update I had to add in here because it's gonna make sense when we get to the kitchen renovation. This is our beloved coffee bar that we loved dearly, but we also have this door next to it that I hadn't shown you pretty much anybody. I don't think anybody's really ever seen in here because it's a little scary. It's because not only is it our broom closet, it's also access to our basement. So you can see here, this is like the attempt at having some kind of storage and organization. It just wasn't completely working for us, obviously. So there's the steps to the basement. A little bit scary, a little bit dangerous, trying to get around the corner to go up and down the stairs with laundry baskets, because yes, our laundry is in the basement as well. It was definitely time for an update. And my suggestion, anytime you're gonna do a closet, is just take everything out, take everything out. Even take off and take down all the organization things, because obviously it wasn't working for you in the first place. You just really need to start over completely, unless it's, you know, a big undertaking for us. There's just some hooks here and there, so lots of screws and nails in the walls that needed to come out. That also needed spackling so that we could refresh the wall and start over. The same, everything has changed every day. So obviously you can see here we had a lot of nail holes and I don't think they were all from just us applying stuff to the walls. I think they'd just been there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. We don't even know. So got all those spackled, sanded it down and now I just decided white paint. We're just gonna paint white. I know it's not fun, it's not exciting, but it really is just a coat closet here. And with it being such a tight, small space, it needed some brightness. So white paint was the way to go here. Using my Dollar Tree paintbrush and Dollar Tree little paint cup there. I love those. I use them for all of my painting projects. Um, even painted the door, which obviously needed it. It was so dingy, gro just gross. So a fresh coat of white paint on the door and the entire inside of the closet and stairway just completely did a refreshing job of taking this from gross and ugly to fresh and clean. And days turn into nights on the couch in your apartment. No, I am not the same. Everything has changed every day. So much better, right? Well, we're gonna add a little bit of style in here, but we're gonna do it the budget-friendly way. I decided I also wanted shiplap in here as well, just to give it some texture. And instead of buying expensive shiplap, I'm using a Sharpie marker. You can even find these at Dollar Tree. So I did very carefully use a level to draw out my very first line on the wall, kind of at eye level, so that way, we can have a good starting point to work from. That way the rest of our lines for the shiplap will be nice, level, and even. So I start with that first line and then I used a piece of, I wanna say this was one by eight, and used that as a spacer and just went all the way around up and down the wall with my Sharpie marker, making sure to make those lines so we kind of have a faux shiplap look happening. This is pretty cool, right? Looks so good, has some style, but we didn't invest a lot of money in it. Super quick and easy to do, and also budget friendly too. Now we're gonna work on the handrail. I had some of this Magnolia paint in the color chalkboard just sitting down in the basement. So instead of leaving the handrail that weird, gross, dirty color, I cleaned that really well and then used two coats of the paint to spruce it up. Then I headed to Ikea, it's one of my favorite places to find organization items, found this Nur... Nurabi? I don't even know how to say it, something like that. They still have it to this day, so I suggest this if you are needing to 
um, add some storage to a closet or somewhere like that. I used them in several different ways. They come with all kinds of accessories, but the main idea here is that you put brackets on, insert a wood rod, and then you add the other bracket on the other side. And for this one, I had some hooks. We're gonna add that onto that, onto the door one. So that way we can hang brooms and dustpans and stuff like that. And then the really cool one that I found are these little canvas baskets. So I installed some more of those rods within the closet for cleaning supplies. hold a lot more than you'd expect too. I also installed the brackets so I could put my floor cleaner, my vacuum in there. Also found these baskets at Ikea. They have hooks on them, they have a shelf, a rubber band, and also a basket on them. So lots of different functionality. Just put a couple screws in the wall. The cool thing was I was able to use those nice level lines to help me install those so they were even. I also found this cool bracket where you can add your iron to it and also your ironing board. It didn't quite work for our ironing board as it's a mini one and it had a hook on it so it didn't sit on the hooks on the bracket. So I just used those for the cord, put a little screw in the wall and then was able to hang the actual board right underneath it to keep everything together and handy. For whatever reason, there was only a small baseboard in this space and this wall didn't have anything. So my creative husband was able to whip up a custom baseboard to match installed that and I went ahead and painted that up and started filling the space with all the cleaning supplies and cleaning tools. I love these plastic holders. I've been using them for years in my kitchen and also in my craft room. They're so handy. You just stick your bags in there. They also fit vinyl rolls. So keep that in mind for your craft room and crafting supplies, but you can even hang things off the shelves in here. It's just multifunctional. Now that everything has a place and a home and it's all clean, it's so much easier to get up and down the stairs and it just looks nicer too. So of course I have to take you back to the before, the big giant mess, cave, hole, not really working for us space to a now clean, bright, airy, organized, and functional space, so much better. I think I spent less than $75 renovating this space. Basically you just used paint and supplies that we already had. The expense went into the Ikea organization items, which really were so affordable. It's just whenever you need several, it adds up, but so much better and definitely a worthwhile renovation. Keep in mind this space as we get into the renovation of our kitchen. Like I said, this house was built in 1908, but we purchased it several years ago and that's what it looked like when we bought it. We did a lot of work to it since then, painting the cabinets, painting the countertops, putting in a pantry and putting in the coffee bar. However, it's still, we always knew we were gonna have to gut it and start over because it wasn't great and functional. So you can see the refrigerator over on the left there. It was hard to open that refrigerator. It was in the corner and we had to get a smaller refrigerator for the space. So we decided to move the refrigerator to the coffee bar wall, which meant we needed to do a lot of work. And the first step in this kitchen renovation was installing this pantry, which is not going to function as a pantry. So what we did is we cut the back of this pantry out and put it right in front of that door to our basement access. Basically, we wanted to make a wall full of cabinets built around our new fridge and freezer. And to do that, we needed to basically make a hidden 
basement access door. So we custom built the pantry to fit and then started installing the cabinets around that. So you can see here, these doors were like a regular pantry. You would have added shelves in there, but for us, we're going to attach the doors together. So they open as one door on each side and cut those supports out of the middle, but we waited to do that till the very end. So we made sure all of our pieces came together the way they were supposed to. And they did, this is what it looked like. We have the clear glass cabinets on top and then we added a bunch of spacers in between them all. So it gave a seamless look. My hubby is amazing and was able to install some uh, lights into the cabinets as well, which just took it to a whole new level. So now that we got that one side done, we're gonna come back over to this side where the refrigerator used to be. So you can see we had to do some major gutting over here and we're gonna turn this section into a sort of wall of cabinets and drawers, make more storage. You can see the drawers are gonna be at the bottom and then you'll see as we go along the cabinets for the top. We also wanted to install an appliance garage here. Basically, we lost our coffee bar. We love coffee and we still needed a place for it, but I don't like stuff on countertops. So what we did is we custom built this cabinet to sit on top of the base cabinet. And eventually as we go along here, you'll see how this functions, but we just needed to build it to be a spacer so then we could install the upper cabinets. We can't install the appliance garage until the countertops are installed. So we just got to work on installing all the cabinets, all the base cabinets, all the wall cabinets, and went through this one by one. Look at those beautiful lights up there. Oh, it's starting to come together until we get over to this section of the kitchen. This is where I was dreading doing the renovate or doing the demo because we were gonna lose our sink. We we're gonna lose our dishwasher, but it had to be done. We had to take all of the cabinets out, the countertops out, all the backsplashes out. We had to do a bunch of rewiring here because there was issues once we removed the backsplash. This became more of a nightmare than we thought. But we got through it, put up new backer board for the new tile, and then started installing the top cabinets and then the base cabinet. So we got a really nice corner cabinet now with lots of storage in it that we didn't have before. And we took our cabinets all the way to the door. So that gave us a little bit of extra room as well. We do have these spaces on either side of the sink cabinet, which we decided to utilize. Instead of just closing it off, we found these Revashelf um, inserts that get installed into the space. And then you put a trim piece on the front and a little knob on the front and they pull out and it's like hidden storage too. It's amazing. We definitely took advantage of every square inch of this kitchen that we possibly could. Now we weren't done yet. We definitely needed to install some kind of countertops now so we could still use our kitchen to do small things if we needed to. Hubby even cut out a hole in the plywood so that way we could put our old sink back in and have a temporary sink until it was time to get the countertops. So he was able to then install another awesome little feature here, another Revashelf product that you put on the um, cutouts that d usually don't have a purpose on your sink base that now ours do. So they tilt out, they have little trays in them. You can put sponges and things like that in there. So it's just nice to have everything functional. A friend of ours mentioned to get one of these, they're little cups that you can put your utensils in. So we definitely were glad that we were able to utilize that. There's soft clothes too, which I love. We also added some more storage underneath the sink. Again, organization was the big aim of the game here, along with just storage in general. So once we had all the base cabinets in, it was time to start working on other things in the kitchen. It seems like it was a long laundry list and we were able to finally start getting our stove in and our new microwave, range hood microwave, I think it's called something like that. And that again made our kitchen functional so we could cook and use the microwave. So here is a look at what we are getting at, like a picture of our design and then the actual kitchen coming together. Not looking so bad, right? But we definitely have a lot of finishing details still yet to go.
While we waited on the countertops, we were able to install all of the trim. Obviously, honey is such a big help. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was fun having a puppy during renovations. <laughs> but we did get it done nonetheless. Got the new trim installed. We kept with a craftsman style look around the doors and the windows, that thick, chunky trim, and then just used white paint to paint all the trim as well. Now I didn't want everything in the kitchen to be white, so I decided my accent wall, I wanted to be green. Well, I'd loved this color for so long, was excited to use it, and it just didn't give me the right vibe I wanted. I wanted more of like a darker sagey tone and it came out more sea foam. So we scratched that, went to the store, found Evergreen Fog, which is the 2022 color of the year. I can see why it is beautiful. This is more of what I was hoping for, that darker evergreen look, right? So that wall got this paint over the seafoam color and it was so much better. Now on to the other walls in the room. So I am guessing that the drywall was probably done 50 years ago or more in this space. There were multiple layers of uh, wallpaper and it was either shiplap, which is what we're doing here, or completely rip out the drywall and start over. And we just don't like drywall. So shiplap it was, we're just tying the house together. The bedroom got shiplap, now the kitchen is getting shiplap. So we did that on two walls in the kitchen and installed all of that, which just, like I said, it's a quick transition. So I was loving it. And now was the hard part. Keep the, the walls, the shiplap white or paint it the color, the green color of the other wall. And the kids and my husband all agreed it should be green. So I went with green and let me tell you, I am so glad we did. I love white shiplap. It is classic, beautiful but this green color just made everything pop. It's still a neutral tone, so like everything matches with it. And it just gives it more of a warm, cozy, homey feel. And now it's time for even more trim. So this point we were adding the crown molding to the tops of the cabinets, which just gives this kitchen such a grandeur kind of look. Like I said, we have nine foot ceilings and the crown molding just pulls your eyes all the way up to the ceiling, gives it a beautiful seamless look. Am I hearing the oohs and ahs? I know that refrigerator with all the trim and the color and the shiplap, I don't know. All of it was just finally looking beautiful. I was starting to see light at the end of the tunnel at this point. We still have lots to do, lots of detail work to do, but one of the big things that I had been dreaming, hoping, wishing, waiting for was finally here the quartz countertop install. Oh my goodness. This was everything for this kitchen. Beautiful, gorgeous. We had painted our old countertops, which worked for like three, four years, but to have actual countertops now, it was like a dream come true. We're going to set this kitchen off with this gorgeous brass hardware. I found it on Amazon. I will link it down below. It's a little bit pricey, but whenever you're talking about a kitchen renovation, you want to get what you want. You don't want to make do for a while because then that just adds to the price. So we just went ahead and got this and I am so glad we did. It is like jewelry on our new cabinets. So don't skimp if you can. There's some other really affordable options that are pretty too. But this color just was everything and loving it, loving it, loving everything. We're not done though. We still need to now work on more of the details. Specifically, the last big, big thing in this kitchen was the backsplash. We also switched out the lighting. So we had these drop lights over the countertops in front of each one of the windows. 
very inexpensive pretty sure Amazon lights these are the old ones and now here is the updated new ones with the brass color that match the hardware perfectly the globes oh my goodness it still has that timeless beautiful style to them had to have it this light on the ceiling isn't my favorite thing, but the lighting wasn't centered in the room. We have an island that we move around, so they just didn't have a light I could find that was centered. Like, you didn't have to center it in the room, and centering and balance is everything for me. So I found this kind of wonky light instead, which works really great. It it's, illuminates a lot of light, obviously, with all those light bulbs, and then there's one in the center that beams down, too. So that's kind of the solution to my problem. Now let's talk about the backsplash. One of my favorite places to go is Floor & Decor, not sponsored. I literally just love roaming around their store to look at the different flooring, the different tile. They have a little showroom. I love, I just enjoy it. I love design. So I have been eyeballing a similar picket style tile to this there. I will link where I got mine down in the description box below though, because I didn't get mine at floor decor this one is just a little bit higher quality it is marble and it had a little bit nicer style to it i guess if that's a thing but it was just not the easiest thing to install because there's no square edges so it was kind of difficult with all the spacers in there but we got through it it also seemed like it just went on and on and on forever i didn't realize we had so much square footage for our backsplash. So it took a while. It took a couple days to install the tile. Um, we let it sit and then we cleaned it all up and then it was finally time to grout. I just did a regular white grout. I almost wish I would have done a gray just because being in a kitchen stuff splashes and white can kind of take on different colors. We haven't really had that problem yet though, so it's really not a big deal and it looks really nice too, but I think if I were to do it over again, I might do like a light gray color, but this still looks beautiful too. It really looks pretty contrasted against the white countertops and the green shiplap. Now the space by the back door, this open space used to have a cabinet on it. However, we decided to not do that and do open shelving here instead. I found these gorgeous brass brackets. I will link them down in the description box below. And we're gonna use some red oak for the shelves. I adored the graining in this wood and decided we're not gonna do a whole lot to it. We're just gonna cut it down to size. We're going to sand it smooth. And then to seal it, I just used some polycrylic just in case there was any spills or anything. And I could also dust the shelves without damaging the wood. Talk about a gorgeous update. Just installed the brackets, cut the wood down to size so they would fit in between the trim, between the window and the door, and sat those on top. Add a little bit of adhesive on there to make sure they wouldn't slide around. And then I found these awesome labels and containers on Amazon. I'll link those down below too. I added the labels onto the fronts of these jars and just kept it really, really simple. Adding the items that we use most frequently onto the shelves. I also put some mixing bowls and some cutting boards and this cute little timer from Target too. Now back over to this area. Remember, this is where the refrigerator used to be. And now that our countertops are installed, we were able to install the cabinet for the appliance garage. And then we had all this empty space over to the left. And I hit Amazon, sure enough, found a little hidden uh, spice rack that we were able to install, added a piece of trim on the front and a handle. And now we have a really a uh, close by convenient spice rack right near our stove and it's hidden away, like I said, using every inch of space we absolutely could in this kitchen. So the door on the appliance garage actually lifts up so it doesn't open like a typical door. And it took us a couple tries, but we finally found the right hinges that will work with this cabinet. And they just kind of rest on the inside of the cabinet itself and you install the door onto the front and then it lifts up and out of the way. And then we have our own little hidden coffee bar in there. Here's another look at that hidden spice rack, loving that. And then it was finally time to start adding the accessories, which you guys know is my favorite part. I researched a lot of these and found them inexpensively on Amazon. So again, 
as much as I can, I'll link down below things that were um, just pretty. Also things that were important to me. I had one of my grandmother's cookie cutters that I wanted to add in here that was part of my childhood. There's also a framed photo that she passed down to me that I hung on the wall in the kitchen. So keeping something sentimental and part of our family and tradition in this space is what really makes it personalized. This is the photo of a painting she had painted of a house she lived in with my papa when they first got married that she gifted to him for Father's Day and then left to me. So very proud and humble to be able to put this in my brand new kitchen now. It definitely it has added such a sentimental touch. I even love the frame on this. It's probably 30 years old, but it just works in the space, keeping it in that classic timeless vibe. And then as you can see, here is our new basement access door that goes down to the basement and also is our broom closet. And we were able to put a shelf, actually install one of the shelves on the top. So we even have more storage at the top, which has been super handy for overflow. Our refrigerator and freezer are huge, double the size of a regular fridge and freezer, but it saved us thousands of dollars. It's a hack and I will link both of those down below. You'll need a freezer and a refrigerator and a trim kit. But like I said, it will save you thousands. We also made this kitchen a smart home setup. So we have this hub where we have all our lights, we have our security system, our cameras and intercom. There's an alarm on there. Alexa is hooked up to it. We have our thermostat hooked up to it. So it's just kind of a nice place to be able to function all the things we need to in the house and it also has a camera on it. This space over here too is a custom built pantry that we did a year and a half ago, but it worked in this space. So we kept it and just put the shiplap around it and made a little key rack area next to the back door. And now for the before and after, let's go way back when the house was purchased, what it looked like before. And now of course the huge after that is just stunning and almost unrecognizable. We called the kitchen before the Golden Arches kitchen because it was red and yellow. It had yellow countertops. They had attempted to paint the cabinets black but used the wrong paint so they were pretty sticky. I was able to paint them white and they held up for a little bit but I knew they were just kind of nearing the end of their life. So being able to just kind of start from scratch, start over. We worked in sections around the kitchen, so we still had access and use of our kitchen, like the kitchen sink, and we're able to kind of do this. It was still a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. It was like 19 weeks of a lot of work, a lot of attention to detail, a lot of adjusting. As in any old home, it's just hard to kind of work around the unevenness of things. Um, but we made it work. It all really came together. Th this kitchen is just really special to us. It's all our blood, sweat, and tears besides the countertops. We did all the work. My husband did the majority of the work, I'm not gonna lie. But I do make a pretty good assistant, I think, and designer as a lot of this was my vision and my concepts and being able to add in the hidden storage was part of the ideas that we threw around too. And it's cool to see those ideas come to life. We were able to raise our upper cabinets up a couple inches because our other ones were mounted too low. So that gave us more space. Underneath, we also extended out the countertop by this back door right here next to the sink and also gained that countertop space over by the appliance garage. And we also added taller cabinets and obviously so many more new cabinets around the refrigerator, which gives us so much storage, which this kitchen was sorely lacking. I love the open shelving. I wasn't sure if I would or not. I don't like a lot of clutter. I like things put away or hidden if they're not pretty, but I do like the small amount of open cabinet or open shelving just because it gives us easy access to things that we use, you know, on a daily basis. The kitchen was a lot like the bedroom where you kind of cross your fingers and toes and hope the things that you order online arrive and they're just as good as you would hope they would be. And we were very fortunate that everything worked out. The backsplash was one of those things and it arrived and it was more beautiful in person. The lighting we weren't sure about, the cabinets, the hardware, but it all arrived beautiful in better quality than we had hoped. And it all just really came together beautifully. This stove, we did go to the store and purchase it. It's another hack that saved us 
tons of money. It looks very high end, but it doesn't have a high end price tag. So I'll link that down below too. And we also got the matching microwave for over the range as well. I think this refrigerator wall is probably my favorite of the whole kitchen just because I've always had this idea of having a wall full of cabinets. We just never knew how we were going to pull it off being that we had the basement access door there. And I always thought maybe a hidden door would work, but you really don't know until you get into it. But it all just really did work with all the hidden stores that we have with that wall of cabinets with the colors and sometimes you just have to roll with it. But we were able to just not have to roll with it too much luckily the things that we did reuse in here were the blinds so we did keep the blinds just clean them up really good and here's lots of before and afters for you to do some comparison these are definitely my favorite before and afters of the entire video this was a lot of hard work and time put into these before and afters but i knew that the effort was going to be worth it and as you can see side by side it definitely was worth it so beyond all of the makeovers that I showed you in today's video, we have done so much more to our home too, including this photo of my daughter's bedroom. We updated my son's bedroom. We also have already done a huge bathroom renovation, but we're not done yet. We still have another bathroom, a hallway and stairway, a laundry room, and more still to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you decide to subscribe and come back as I will bring you along for the rest of the 100 plus year old home renovations that we still have yet to come. Please take a second, hit that thumbs up button. Also head to the description box to links to everything I mentioned in today's video. I want to thank you all so much again for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.